So we've made a map layout that's maybe not too bad, but I definitely think that there's some things that we can do to improve its readability and interpretation as a whole. So let's have a look at a couple of things that we can do in terms of advanced map layout operations within ArcGIS Pro. Now the first thing that I'd like to do is to tidy up this legend. I really don't like the way ArcGIS makes that legend come over with the name of the feature class, particularly if it's a long feature class like this. And I actually don't feel that I, I need to have a label there at all. So let's have a look at how we can remove that. So if I right click on that first of all, and I'm going to go to the legend properties. The first thing I'm going to do is to remove the layer name and then also the headings. And so we'll see that change immediately over here. So it no longer says type and, and the, the feature class name itself. So I think that's a lot tidier. Now the other thing that I think that we need to do is to increase the size of the font there just to make it a little bit clearer as well. So I'm going to go over to the text symbol and appearance here and I'm going to increase that font size to let's say 16 and we'll see how that looks. We'll apply that and I think that's a lot clearer so that's great. Now the next thing that I'd like to do is I'm going to make this, I'd like to have it in two columns. So I've got six items within my legend and I think that would fit nicely in two columns. So I'm going to squash that up just there and that's just flowing over there now so I have it into two columns and if, if I like perhaps it's going to actually figure, figure out better as, as three columns. I think it might just depend on how I work out my map in the end as well but I do have a couple of other elements that I'm going to add so I might play with them a little bit later. Now the next thing I'd like to do is I'm not sure if you can see it but there's some text in the bottom of this map view here which is the credit information as to where that satellite image in the background has come from. Now this is really important information to have but I don't actually like it in that location and it's really difficult to read. So I'm going to go up to dynamic text and I'm going to click on service layer credits. Now as I do that I'm going to draw out a box and we'll watch what happens. So those credits are going to now come into this box and be removed from the bottom of my map view. So we can see that there and I feel that that looks a lot tidier and I can now copy and paste that into my other map credit information that's down the bottom right if I want to do that or have that as a separate box. But I'm just going to leave that there for the moment because again I've got some other items to add and I'll need to work out how my layout goes all, all up when I put everything in. Now I would like to add an inset that's going to give me an overall view of whereabouts this location is. So saying just infrastructure on JCU Cairns campus, that's great if you're in the area and you know where JCU Cairns is, but perhaps my audience is international and they need to be aware of where this actually occurs, perhaps in the context of Australia. So a couple of steps to do this. I'm going to first of all go over to new map and I'm going to create a new map and that's going to pop up as a new tab over here and that map all that I want on it is this topographic map of Australia that's that's all I don't need anything else because this is what I'm going to use now to create my inset to have an indicator of where the JCU Cairns campus is. Now what I'd like to do is just so that I don't just have these maps being called map and map one and it's a little bit confusing as to which is which, I'm going to change the name of this. So if I right click on the name over here and go to properties and I'm going to change the name of this map to inset and OK. Now we'll just see that that changes up the top there. Now that's important because in a moment you'll see that I get to choose which map I'm going to add into my layout and this will make it really easy for me to pick that I want that particular inset. Now I'm just going to click over on Explorer and make sure that I get the right zoom level for, for Australia. So if I hit shift and draw out a box around Australia that zooms me in nice and neatly. Might just pan over just a little bit more as well. Now I'm going to come back to my layout and as we did when we added the map frame for the Cairns campus, I'm going to add another map frame again. So this time I'm going to add my little inset over here so you can just see that that's popped up. 
So create that and draw out a box for my map of Australia that I'm then going to locate Cairns campus on there as well. So to be able to do that, I'm going to go up to where it says Extent Indicator under the Insert tab here. So I'm going to tap on that one and I'm going to make that show the extent of my map frame, which is my JCU Cairns map frame, onto the, the little inset map that I've got here. So once that pops up, it's actually going to be really, really difficult to see. And that's okay because I'm now going to go in and change some of those properties. So if I right click on, on the extent here and go to properties. So what we need to do is to come to where it says collapse to point and just increase that. So if we increase that to one point, that's perfectly fine. And now you'll see that the location is now obvious on our inset map. Now we may want to play with that symbol. Maybe that's a little bit too large. Perhaps it's not the right color. That's fine. We can come over onto the right hand side here and tap on that symbol. And I'm going to decrease the size of it a little bit. And I'm also going to change its color. So I'm going to make it a yellow dot. Now the only other thing that I'd like to do is I want to zoom in a little bit more to my Australia extent here. So if I head over to the layout tab and I want to activate this map view here, that's going to allow me to zoom in and find this perfect spot here. And I can pan by using the explore button and so that I can find Australia just in the right spot. And you'll see that my little extent color dot moves with me as well. So once I've done that, I head back, back to the layout and close the activation and that will allow me to get back to my overall map. So I've got my inset map, I've got my little extent point. If you zoomed in a lot more, you can make this an actual rectangle so it's quite clear where that's come from as well. Now you may remember we also created a graph as part of this project. So I'm also going to want to include the graph that I created. So come back over to the insert tab and the chart frame. So I'm going to tap on that one and draw out a box for my chart. It doesn't matter where I put it at this point, I can always change it and resize it. So just drawing it to get it started there. And we now have the chart appear there as well. Now something that I may want to do is to align both the chart and the insert map, for example, which I can do that by holding the shift key and selecting both of those items. So that has both my, my insert map view there and also the, the graph there. Now if I right click on that, I can go to align and perhaps I want them aligned left, let's say, and you'll see one move over to the other. You can actually see that they're slightly different sizes now, which isn't very neat. So if I click off that and I can use the grids within ArcGIS Pro and in the layout to actually resize my features so that they look nice and neat. So I'm actually going to, as you can see, if I draw this out, I increase the size and when I decrease it and get it to the same size as the feature below it, it automatically snaps to that as well. So I can have my items nicely aligned and also the same size, which is going to help me balance my map. If I wanted to move my north arrow over to somewhere where there's a dark background, potentially in this area where there's the satellite image and quite a bit of wasted space, it's really difficult to see it there. So I'm gonna change the color of that. So to do that, I right click on the north arrow and go to properties and you'll see its color here is black. So I'm just going to change that to white and then I can hit apply on that and you'll see it automatically changes and that's a lot more visible in that location as well. So the last thing really for me to do is to, is to label some of my features. Now in, my, in the feature class that I've created, I named some of my buildings. So some of the most important buildings on campus, I named a couple of those as an example within the attribute table. So now what I'd like to do is to put those labels on the map and I'm going to label to start with just the, the library and the student union area. So if I go over to the left hand side here on my table of contents and I can scroll down and find my infrastructure feature class here which is where all of those different polygons are sitting. 
Now I'm going to right click on that and first of all go into labeling properties. So this is going to give me some information about what I'm going to label and how I'm going to label it. Now if we have a look here under the expression it's already set up to label the buildings or the, the infrastructure based on the name that occurs within my attribute table. So just as a reminder if we have a look at the map here and if I was to open the attribute table here you'll see that I have a field for name and not all of my features have a name associated with them but some of them do and I've labeled a couple for this example so one called the student union and one called the library and if I tap on those you'll see them highlighted there's my student union up in the map view up here and you'll see the library selected now as well so I want to clear that selection and come back to my layout view and let's have a look at how we're actually going to label these as part of the map itself. So as I mentioned we're looking at the expression here and so this is saying that it's going to label based on the name within this feature class. Perhaps if I wanted to change that and label based on the type so whether it's a building or a bareground or road etc all I would need to do would be to delete that expression there and double click on type and that would come down and apply that. That's not what I want to do though, so let's delete that back and come back to name and all I need to do is apply there. Now you won't see any change to that immediately because that's just created the properties for those particular labels. Now we need to switch the label on. So if we right click on the infrastructure feature class again, we just need to hit label and we will see those labels pop up there for the student union and the library. Now any changes that you make to that attribute table now will be dynamically updated. So if I added in the names of any of the other buildings, they'll pop up there as well. So that's pretty much it for some of the advanced features. Now really it's all up to me to try and make this cartographically balanced and appealing to the eye. I've got all the elements there, but I need to make sure that it, it looks great rather than being a bit of a jumble with some things overlapping each other. So I do have quite a bit of artistic work to do to finish this job, but at least I know that I've got all the elements there and it's, it's the start of a really great map. Next part, it's all up to you to see what your artistic capability is like and see how you can map your school or your, your local area as well.